so I listened to the most recent episode of Accidental Tech Podcast, one of my favorite podcasts, and it included a story from Marco Arment talking about um, struggling to set up a development environment locally to create a Jekyll site and run it locally and preview it before pushing the changes up to GitHub and you know seeing it in production on GitHub pages. Uh, and I'm a professional Ruby developer for seven or eight years, and I I know that it is probably harder than it should be to get started with a Ruby development development environment. And so I was sort of curious to maybe try to attempt a speed run, and maybe that would be helpful for other people uh, who are in Marco's situation. Um, and also maybe it would just be interesting for me to see how complicated it can be to get started. Uh, so I'm going to try to make a new Jekyll site, kind of like the one he described in the episode. Uh, I've created a new admin user on my computer here, and uh, let's jump into it and see how I do. Uh, so uh, at this point, the state of my system is I have uh, the system Ruby installed, and I have Homebrew installed, and that's kind of it. Uh, and I don't want to use the system Ruby because the Ruby community for a long time has recommended against it because it will it works great but if you want to install packages which Ruby calls gems uh, Ruby wants to install them globally and so you need to use sudo to install them globally and so they recommend using a Ruby version manager to install a version of Ruby and um, your user copy of Ruby will install packages in your user directory and so no sudo needed and so uh, I'm going to try out using rbn which actually I don't usually use but uh, I think it is probably the one that I would recommend to most people anyway because the community generally prefers it. I usually use chruby but I consider that kind of a hipster choice, uh, which uh, I am comfortable owning. Uh, looks like my new user doesn't have permission to do this, uh, so I think I'm just going to do this for now and try again. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay. Seems like that didn't work. Um, I did just run this, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I think I'm gonna just be aggressive here and just run this for the entire user local directory. Just take ownership of it for my test user. I guess I'll need to do this again when I switch back to my regular user. Hopefully I don't regret this. We'll see. Uh, operation not permitted. Hmm. So this probably will fail again. Oh, interesting. They actually give me a more exhaustive command here. Oh, wait. Did it work? I guess it's not done yet. Alright, we'll be patient. Mm, okay, so it's installing. All right, I guess it worked. So now we have rbenv, and if we do rbenv, uh, let's see, versions, we should see that we don't, we only have the uh, the installed, or we only have the system version installed. So why don't we try doing rbenv install 3.0.1, which I believe is the latest version. So hopefully that doesn't take very long. We can kind of see stuff happening up here, which is kind of fun. Clang, etc. I guess it's compiling Ruby as we speak, as we sit here. Very cool. I'm 
And so once this finishes, we're going to do RBM global to set our global preference. And then after that, we're going to do RBM rehash, uh, which they recommend doing every time you install something new. Sure. <laughs> RBM wentz. I kind of enjoy the drama of that word wentz, you know? Or like the grandeur of that. Okay. Patience is, is a virtue, as they say. You can see Perl is involved in the installation process. Would not have seen that coming, but happy for them. I am curious why it's using Perl. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, I know Ruby was, you know, very influenced by Perl, so maybe that's why. Maybe there's Perl involved in, like, the build script. But so be it. I guess maybe that was just installing OpenSSL. So maybe Perl was involved in the OpenSSL part. Now we've moved on to the Ruby part. All right, so this is pretty clear output, I guess. It has to download something. Uh, oh, meanwhile, stuff's happening over there. All right, all right, so now it's installing Ruby itself, which hopefully will succeed. If not, the speedrun might be just aborted at that point. This is a 2019 MacBook Pro, perhaps showing its age a little bit, but as they say, Patience remains a virtue. Feel free to fast forward until <laughs> until you see some movement. I'm just gonna sit here and patiently wait. Okay, the printer 
I don't know why that opened. I was just sitting here. Uh, yeah, I think what's happening, just for transparency, is that, you know, I'm on, this is my work computer, and uh, I'm guessing that there's some stuff that happens when you create a new user. Like, it sets up your printers, and there's just some, like, IT provisioning stuff. Uh, like, it turned on File Vault automatically, and uh, anyway. Perhaps the computer is occupied with multiple multiple tasks right now. Because I am also racing against the battery. I will do this. I will finish the speed run. Meanwhile, I guess I'll just read this. All right, so okay, first step is install rbenv. The next step here is to run rbenv init, which actually we didn't do yet. We kind of skipped that. And we also skipped running rbenv doctor, so maybe we should actually, uh, try that next. You know, following instructions, usually good, usually good. Although, you know, maybe classic programmer uh, attitude of just <laughs> skip the instructions, just go for it. I think it might be ramping up. All right, so we can see it installed it to my user directory great. Let's try out the rbm init as well. Alright, so they're recommending to add that to our z C. So, I'll do that. Uh, escape. Okay. So let's try closing terminal, opening a terminal, make that bigger again, and now we can do rbm global 301. Now if we do Ruby V, we can see that we're using 301. We can see we have multiple Rubies in our uh, path, but it's preferring the one from RBM, which is great. And so now let's proceed. So we have Ruby. We now want to run gem install Jekyll. All right, and actually I'll cancel that real quick. So if we also do which gem, we're gonna see that it's from uh, uh, RBM. So now if we do gem install Jekyll, we're basically installing the Jekyll package globally, which is going to give us a Jekyll CLI utility and executable. So gem is gonna print a whole bunch of stuff. It's basically installing Jekyll, installing all of Jekyll's dependencies. Uh, we should be able to, to see that once it completes by running gem list, which will list all of the globally installed packages and all the various versions of things, which should basically just be Jekyll and its dependencies. So we'll let that finish, and then we'll run gem list. Whenever it hangs for a minute, a minute, you see building native extensions. Basically, you know, most of this is just installing like plain text Ruby files, but Ruby gems or Ruby packages can have uh, native extensions, which is basically some C code usually that needs to be compiled. Uh, packages will often come with some C code for like the performance intensive stuff and then have a nice Ruby interface to it. 
Uh, so whenever it hangs, it'll usually, <laughs> like, it'll, this could take a while, uh, which is accurate. How are we doing on battery? 12%, all right, here we go. So once this completes, oh yeah, the other thing I'll mention is that like part of what takes time here is that it installs documentation for every gem, which you can turn off. There's a, an option which will make it skip that, which a lot of people choose to do. All right, great. So now we should have a Jekyll command and we should also be able to see gem list is gonna show that we have actually a lot of gems now, including Jekyll. So why don't we go to our desktop and we'll do Jekyll new um, I guess park slope so I think Marco was making a site for his town I live in park slope so that is what I will put and so what it's doing is making a scaffold for a new Jekyll site and so if we now go into park slope um, we should see that there are several files here. It's setting it up as a blog, um, which we can reevaluate. It doesn't, you don't need to have a blog. Uh, but let's just try running it first. It looks like right off the bat it did fail, which is not what I expected, to be fair. Um, so let's debug it, right? So we can see that, um, I guess if you're not familiar with Ruby, debugging this would be fairly difficult. And it's not a good experience, I acknowledge. Um, so it looks like inside of the Jekyll source code, it tries to require WebRick, and it finds that it cannot. And so I think I'm going to try to resolve that by doing gem install WebRick. I think that maybe what's happening here is that I'm using such a new cutting edge version of Ruby that, uh, uh, sorry, that's my washing machine, hold on. My washing machine makes a pretty horrible sound when it's done. Okay. Uh, so WebRick, I think, was bundled with Ruby until Ruby 3, and maybe now it's not, so you need to install it explicitly. Uh, so let's actually do that in the gem file itself, right? So gem file is specifying what our dependencies are. Bundle add basically adds a dependency as an explicit dependency. So let's try one more time and see if that helped. Uh, looks like it did. Uh, so now if we go to localhost 4000, here is our Jekyll site. Um, that's great. Let's now, uh, let's see, maybe open this up and VS Code, just so we can explore a little bit more. I don't want to customize my setup right now, but let's just take a look at what we have. So if we, down here, run Jekyll serve, and then look at what we have here. We have our index.markdown, which says, use the layout called home. Uh, it looks like we're using a theme here, which is not required, right? So somewhere here we specify Oh, geez. All right, my battery is going to die in probably f two minutes. Uh, all right, plugged in. Don't want to rush through this. Here we go. I'm on battery power now. Uh, great. So we're using a theme called Minima, and basically a lot of this is optional. Uh, oh, no. I thought I plugged in my keyboard, but I plugged in my external hard drive. Okay, there we go. Um, but why don't we try, you know, if you want to have your own custom, uh, let, let's try customizing this a little bit. So if we just sort of like delete basically almost everything, right? So if we, I don't even want a title. I just want to get rid of basically everything. I'm going to get rid of literally everything. Right, like we don't need a config. We're just going to use the stock situation. Um, 
All right, so get rid of the config. Um, now, if we try to run this, it's going to fail because in a few places we're referencing layouts that don't exist, right? So why don't we, you know, we're, this isn't a blog also. It's just like a home page for Park Slope. So let's get rid of the posts. Let's keep this 404 page. Let's keep this, which has layout page. Let's keep this, which says layout home. So basically we need three layouts here. Um, right, because the index says use layout home. So I'm gonna say this is home page. This is my home page about Park Slope. And then why don't we add another page here, which we'll rename and just call it like coffee shops, right? And we'll need a directory called layouts, I think. Right, and so we have a layout home, a layout default, and a layout called uh, page. This is my page about coffee shops, right? And so let's make some layouts. So let's start with a layout called default.html. And let's just Google HTML5 uh, boilerplate. Uh, oh, that's maybe exactly what I want. Um, I don't want to download anything. Maybe I'll just literally, um, all right, I forgot in Safari, you can't view source unless you say like advanced. Okay. Yeah. I want to, I want to be able to view source. Thank you. I think I'm just going to like literally copy this. Right, we don't really need all of this. I literally just can't remember how to do everything I want to do. Right, so here I'll say um, title is page.title, probably everything else we don't really need. Go ahead and delete the rest. Da, 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 da. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, oh, we don't have a head. Isn't there usually a head? I guess they don't do that anymore. That's news to me. Okay. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Okay, great. So now I don't remember how to do like the yield idea of like yield to this particular page's stuff. So I think what I'll actually do is reference my own blog's source code, just because I use Jekyll for my personal blog. And so I'm inclined to just check this. Content, that's what I was looking for. Okay, great. So I guess two things I learned there. One, this directory should be called underscore layouts. Fair enough. And two, we want to use content. Um, all right, so let's make our other layouts here. So there's this idea of YAML, I think they call it YAML front matter. All right, so. Uh, The idea here is we can say basically this inherits kind of from layout. So here we're saying like, here's a layout for a page. If you ever say layout page, you'll get basically this and it'll plop itself into the outer shell. So if you wanted to say like every page has this like specific stuff you could, um, this is kind of optional, but if you want to, you can. Um, and yeah, and I guess we have one more here, which is home. So if your homepage is like different content, like maybe it has like a uh, like a list of posts or something, you might want something different. Right, so I think now we might be done. So let's try reloading here. 
Okay, great. So we have this is my home page about Park Slope. We can say show page source, and we can see that it has div class equals home. Now, if we go to slash coffee shops, we can see we have the page specific layout, and it's part of the um, uh, what do you call it? The uh, default layout. One thing that isn't working is this. So we're referencing page.title, which does, that's not a thing, uh, and it's clearly not working. So let's just fix that real quick. I think we need two curly braces, actually. And so if we reload now, we'll see title is coffee shops. That's great. So that came through now. And what about on the home page? On the home page, we didn't specify a title. So if we come back to here, we can just specify one and say title. Welcome to Park Slope. Now if we reload, there it is. So I think I'll stop there. Basically, you can kind of see the pattern. Um, like here we can use, you know, Markdown. Um, and because the file extension is Markdown, it'll automatically convert that. Pretty convenient. Um, it'll also take care of 404s automatically, right? So you go to a route that doesn't exist, you get uh, this exact content, so you can also customize this if you want. Um, and that's basically it. Like those are the primitives. You can go from there. You can build it up into a whole complicated thing, but that is optional. All right. Good luck. Good luck out there.